Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be evaluating a function f at x equals 0. So we're given f of f of x equals x squared minus x plus 1 and we're going to evaluate f of 0. So in order to be able to evaluate f of 0, first of all I'm going to find f of 1. And you're going to see why this is helpful. So let's go ahead and replace x with 1 on both sides of the equation, the original one. If I replace x with 1, which is something that I can do, right, I get f of f of 1 equals 1 squared minus 1 plus 1, which is equal to 1. So now, we don't know what f of 1 is. We're going to try to find it first, and then we're going to find f of 0. So for that purpose, let's go ahead and name it something. How about f of 1 equals a. a is just a constant. It's the value of f of 1. And since f of 1 is equal to a, based on my assumption, I can safely say that f of a is equal to 1. All right. So now, let's go ahead and do the following. In the original equation, let's go ahead and replace x with a this time. Because that's going to give me something helpful. If I do that, I'm getting f of f of a basically, right? And then f of f of a, what is that equal to? I do know that f of a is equal to 1, so I can basically just replace f of a with 1, and then this becomes equal to f of 1. But based on our assumption, f of 1 is equal to a. Therefore, I get the following. f of f of a is equal to a. Let me rewrite it. f of f of a is equal to a. So this is an important finding. Now let's go ahead and find f of f of a in a different way. How do, you, how do you find it? Well, we do know that f of f of x is equal to x squared minus x plus 1. Now I can replace x with a on both sides. And that's going to give me f of f of a is equal to a squared minus a plus 1. We also know that this expression is equal to a. Therefore, I can just set the whole thing equal to a. And from here, we get a nice equation, a quadratic equation, which turns into a perfect square. Perfect. Let's put the a's on the same side. We get a squared minus 2a plus 1 is equal to 0. And notice that this is equivalent to a minus 1 squared, which means a is equal to 1. Awesome. But what is a? A is f of 1, remember? That was our initial assumption, wasn't it? So since we found the value of a, which means we found f of 1. So this implies f of 1 equals 1. Now, how do we use f of 1 equals 1 to find f of 0, right? That's what we need. So let f of 0 equal another constant. Let's call that b because we already used a, right? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at f of b. What is f of b, right? Well, f of b is f of f of 0 by definition, right? And if you go back to the original, let's remember what our function was. It was f of f of x equals x squared minus x plus 1. To find f of f of 0, all I have to do is replace x with 0 on both sides, and that's going to give me 1. So f of f of 0 is equal to 1 by definition, right? Which means f of b is equal to 1, right? Because f of 0 is b, if f of f of 0 is 1, it means f of b is equal to 1. And this is a very important finding. Let's go ahead and rewrite it f of b is equal to 1. How do we use this information? We're still not at the level of f of 0, right? Here's what we're going to do. We know f of b is 1, so why not try to find f of f of b? Something that we can always do with the composition function, because here we see the composition of f with itself, which is f of f, right? So we can basically in that, we can replace x with b. So f of f of x, one more time, is equal to x squared minus x plus 1. Now let's go ahead and replace x with b. That gives us f of f of b is equal to 
b squared minus b plus 1. But guess what? f of b is equal to 1. So this is 1. Therefore, b squared minus b plus 1 is equal to f of 1. Hmm. Is that significant? Yes, because we do know the value of f of 1, which is 1. Since f of 1 is equal to 1, we can go ahead and replace it with 1. So now we get a real nice equation. Another nice equation. Remember, the, the, the other equation that we got contained a, and we were able to solve for a because that was a perfect square. This time, things aren't that perfect, but don't worry. We're going to fix it up. So now, we do know that we do know that we have an equation in b, b squared minus b plus 1 equals 1. Let's go ahead and rewrite it and solve it. While well, subtracting 1 from both sides, we get the simple equation b squared minus b is equal to 0. Factoring out the b, we see that b is either 0 or 1. But which one? Can you have two different values for b? Can there be multiple values? And what is b? b is f of 0, right? Remember? f of 0 is b, b is f of 0. So can f of 0 be 0 and 1 at the same time? And the answer is no. A function has to be well defined. If you have one input, it cannot have more than one output. This is a no-no for functions, right? Therefore, f of 0 is either 0 or 1, but not both. So how do we resolve this issue, right? Here's what we're, here is what we're going to do. We're going to assume one of the one of the following. So we're going to say, hey, suppose this is just an assumption, right? Suppose b, which is f of zero, is equal to zero. Okay. So what? Let's go ahead and use the definition of the function f of f of zero. Remember, our function is given as f of f of x equals x squared minus x plus 1. So f of f of 0 is just going to be 1 from here, right? Well, but not yet. We do assume that f of 0 is 0. So let's go ahead and replace f of 0 with 0. And this gives us f of 0, which is 0 according to our assumption. But things aren't that way. f of f of 0, according to the definition, the original one, is supposed to be... 1. Since 1 does not equal 0, this is impossible. Therefore, f of 0 cannot equal 0. So does that automatically imply that f of 0 is equal to 1? Well, now see if what happens if f of 0 is equal to 1. It has to be one of them, right? But let's go ahead and check it out. If f of 0 equals 1 and that is equal to b, now we get f of f of 0, right? Since f of 0 is 1, we get f of 1 from here. And we know that f of 1 is equal to 1. Therefore, this we get a true statement from here. So if f of 0 is equal to 1, everything is going to be awesome. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.